let's get right into this because this week has been painful for every American. And no matter what people think about weaponry and no matter where they are on the political spectrum, I cannot imagine that any American isn't heartbroken for the kind of horror that we saw in Texas. When those kind of things happen, people say, we just have to do something. But the question is, what something would help? What something would make it better? So what can be done? Can we stop evil? I mean, God can, but you know, we, th we can't stop all evil in this world. It's a broken world. In this case, we have found out pretty quickly, it's been a very fast investigation, that the shooter, I'm not gonna use his name, the shooter was in the Air Force and, and had, when it was against his will, put into a mental hospital. He was a domestic, convicted of a felony of domestic violence. So felony, domestic violence, these are things, and he was dishonorably discharged in a, in a form. These are things that are in federal law that we have a society in America decided, we don't want people like this having guns. We don't want dangerous people who are wife abusers, who are mentally ill having guns, all agree. And yet he legally bought a gun because the Air Force didn't put those records into the FBI database. So yes, there is something that can be done. And I think we should be, if you know, there's anything good comes from this, we can see that there is a hold that needs to be fixed in this existing law of federal laws against who can buy guns legally. John, you've studied this most of your adult life. Uh, I, I consider you one of the true experts in the whole field of the relationship of the number of guns that are in a society versus uh, the safety. Do more guns necessarily mean that there's a greater level that a person is going to be the victim of a crime? No, I think the opposite's true. I mean, one of the most startling facts is we can look around the world where guns are banned. And every single place that guns have been banned, murder rates have gone up. I mean, Americans are familiar with what happened in Washington, D.C. and Chicago when handguns were banned. And they, but they'd say, well, you know, that's just something here because unless you ban guns every place in a country, they'll still get guns from the rest of Illinois or from Maryland or Virginia. The thing is, even island nations that have banned guns, presumably the kind of the ideal experiment for gun control, you see huge increases, five, but, but six. But that's counterintuitive, isn't it? I mean, it, it would seem like that if you said there's going to be a restriction on the number of firearms that are in the society, there would be less firearms used in the commission of a crime. So how, how is it that what you just said could be true? But something applies pretty much for all gun control regulations. You have to ask who's most likely to be affected. Now, you may take some guns away from criminals, but if you primarily disarm the most law-abiding good citizens that are there, you actually make it easier for criminals to go and commit crimes. Well, I think an important part of what you're saying is with the other thing we heard this week, and you know, no shooting goes without some people um, calling for more gun control laws that are completely inappropriate and would have done absolutely nothing. Diane, Senator Dianne Feinstein, who had a failed assault, we assault weapon, I'm gonna put that in quotes because an assault weapon is, a, her definition is a rifle with certain cosmetic changes. It has nothing to do with the, the function of the gun. You also heard the, the, a lot of people online, on social media, in the, in the media, the uneducated media, calling for bans on semi-automatic guns, because somehow that sounds scarier, even those of us who know and are gun owners know that that's just how a gun functions. There is no gun control law that has ever been proven to reduce crime. Never. No one, and I say this when I, when I debate people who are pro-gun, you know, go gun control or owned by Bloomberg, tell me, tell me a gun control law that has passed that you saw gun crime go down. And there's never an answer because it doesn't, well, that's not how it works. John, we, we've only got a few seconds left, so I, you know, I, I gotta get a quick answer from you, but I asked Emily about what is the something? So let me ask you, is there a something? I would just make it easier for people to be able to defend themselves. The benefit that you have for having people with concealed carry is that it actually makes the job for police safer because if somebody goes and shoots the officer first, they reveal their position and they have to worry whether somebody behind or the side might be able to stop them. Over 98% of the mass public shootings in the United States since 1950 have occurred in places where people aren't allowed to have guns, general people for protection. These guys may be crazy, but they're not stupid. They know if they can go to a place where people can't quickly get guns to be able to stop them, they'll be able to go and kill more people than they could have otherwise. And you see and this- And just in the church, in the church shooting, uh, you know, 
nobody should be forced to carry a gun when they go to church. That should not be no. a requirement of, you know, we shouldn't have to, and, and we can't all, a lot, I go to a small parish church, we can't have a security. I know some of the bigger churches do. But as the shooter was leaving, a civilian, a man, heard the gunshots, went to his safe, didn't even put on his shoes, he, chased him down, shot him, got him leaving. running away. He was going back to kill the wounded. He was stopped. He was in the process of killing the 20 remaining wounded people there when uh, the civilian came over, shot at him, and made him have to leave the scene there. Well, I want to thank both of you for sharing the insights. And, you know, I, I think everybody, whether they're in our studio audience or watching at home, their heart breaks. Yeah. I think, Emily, when you said, when people go to church, they don't expect that this to be a place of danger, but a place of sanctuary. And if you'd like to get a copy of Emily Miller's book, Emily Gets Her Gun, it's available at all booksellers. And you can follow her analysis of news events by way of her social media sites. It's on your screen. Also, I want to encourage you to read John Lott's book called The War on Guns. Follow the latest research on guns and crime at crimeresearch.org. And read his thoughts at johnrlott.blogspot.com.